Hi and welcome to History Legends. In this video we'll do a step-by-step -step breakdown of the Battle of Bougainville as depicted in the latest Call of Duty Vanguard. Buckle up because it's gonna be a hell of a ride. So before we start, little background story. Basically two American pilots got shot down. These were shot down near an island called Bougainville in the southeast Pacific near Guadalcanal and now they're captured. Fun fact, Bougainville is where Admiral Yamamoto died when his plane was shot down on April 18, 1943. That was a massive blow to Japanese morale during World War II. Okay, right away, it's so obvious how they literally recycled the raid on Mackin Island from World at War. And I can already guess what's about to happen. <laughs> Why does he ask if he speaks Japanese if this guy clearly speaks English? Even the guy at the bottom right corner is looking at him by saying, Are you serious, bro? Did you just ask that in English? <laughs> hold on, hold on. What is that? Why is this Japanese soldier holding a German shotgun? I'm not the greatest gun expert, but I think this is a German Becca shotgun. But in any case, what is he doing with this weapon? in the Pacific. We're only 10 seconds in and there's already so many things that are off. Here comes the cavalry. <laughs> oh my god, the attack is so bad. <laughs> The attack is poorly portrayed for three reasons. Number one, it didn't ambush like that. In that specific setting, every man of the attacking force would aim at a specific Japanese soldier. And then they all fire at the same time, so all the Japanese drop. Number two, the grenades would have been thrown right at the beginning. And number three, the most important, the Americans would only have left cover once all enemy forces have been eliminated. It doesn't make sense that they're exposing themselves and there's still Japanese soldiers firing. Oh, what an overkill. What's an overkill to use a flamethrower? Woke up. They're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. Cut them free. I'm aviation machinist mate, third class Mendez. The ungrateful one's Lieutenant Jackson. We got shot down. That's why we're here. Thanks. Okay, let's be clear. This team's objective was to specifically rescue these pilots. And in a way, it makes sense because pilots are hard to train, especially experienced ones. So whenever pilots were shot down over the ocean or in an island or captured, if you could rescue them, you'd do that and send them back to the front because it's very hard to replace. Sergeant James Washington, Army, 93rd Infantry Division. Hold on. Did he just say 93rd Infantry Division? For me, that alone ruins it for me. It clearly shows how the game developers are idiots. At the beginning, when the mission starts, we clearly see a title that says Battle of Numa Numa, which took place in November 1943. Now, the 93rd Infantry Division was one of two African-American combat infantry divisions during World War II combat. But not really because the 93rd's main tasks were labor and security missions on Guadalcanal. Only part of it did in fact become combat elements. So that goes along the story that we see in this video. Namely the 25th Infantry Regiment. They were sent to Bougainville Island on March 28, 1944. An all African American unit. But how could the game mess up such an easy storyline? The dates don't even match. What's next? D-Day? 1945? And what I find funny is that they really try hard to make it seem as if the 93rd Division were badass. But during all of World War II, this division suffered 12 killed in action and 121 wounded. Exactly. Oh my god, what do you mean, dead weight? You guys were sent there to save them and now they say, dead weight? Who wrote this shit? 
Your mission is to literally rescue these pilots, send them back to base, end of story. What do you mean that wait? That wait for what? I got control of this dick now, Lieutenant. You just said I'm fine. <laughs> what? What a shitty dialogue. First of all, why does it look like Morpheus from The Matrix? And is it me or he's super aggressive with these two pilots that he just rescued? Of course he's in charge, he's the one that led this rescue team. The other guy is just a pilot anyway. Why would he take your position as an infantry squad leader? Oh, just because he's white? Oh yeah, right, they had to add some unnecessary racial tension. But I feel bad for these pilots. They got shot down, they were captured by the Japanese, probably tortured, and now that they have been rescued, they under command of this asshole. Who wants to sacrifice them for some unknown mission? <laughs> it really doesn't make sense that the guy keeps firing the flamethrower at point blank. It's a complete ridiculous use of that weapon. First of all, it had a range of about 20 to 40 meters or 65 to 130 feet. Not one meter in front of your face. And more importantly, the M2 flamethrower was a tool. A tool specifically deployed to combat strongly fortified and entrenched Japanese positions. Since artillery had a tough time destroying these places. Okay, quick pause, check out the screen. There are two things you can notice. One good, one bad. The bad one is that we have a confirmation that they are using a German weapon. They call it the Einhorn revolving whatever. That weapon doesn't exist in real life. Let me know the real name. I think it's the Becker shotgun, but I might be wrong. Comment it below. So that's the bad part. However, the good thing is that the landscape is pretty accurate to what American soldiers actually faced on Bougainville. You see it's dense jungles, a lot of rivers. The only thing missing, in my opinion, it's a lot of mud. And this is what made the actual battle so difficult because it was a logistical nightmare. There are many pictures of this battle where American soldiers are portrayed moving in in thigh deep water or mud. Anyway, let's go. Okay, he just said it's better than loading trucks. And there is some truth to what he said. Like I mentioned before, the bulk of the 93rd Division was designated for labor. That means loading trucks, cleaning, cooking, building, you name it. So it makes sense that he would say that. He finds it more fulfilling to have a combat role. Only a handful of African Americans actually saw combat. Most of them were deployed far behind the front. But let me be clear, it's not because they didn't want to fight. It's because the US military didn't want them to. After World War II though, the American military noticed how much they wasted a huge pool of manpower. Men that could have been excellent soldiers, but who were rejected simply because of the color of their skin. So in 1948, Truman officially desegregated the American military and all men were put to the front line. Oh my god, they literally obsessed with race. They really try to make it seem as if the pilot is a jerk for not knowing who is the 93rd division. He's a damn pilot, what does he know about infantry divisions? I don't think he knows more about the 71st infantry division, the 55th, the 87th. And you know what I noticed? They just rescued these pilots, they don't even give them water, don't even ask them if they're fine, no food. They take them, come on, join us in our random mission. It's so poorly written. I'm mad. That's literally the worst strategy. The worst. Out of all the options, a live bait. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Shut your mouth, white boy. <laughs> Although he's a pilot, he's completely right. This is the worst tactic you could use. That Washington guy, Morpheus, 
wants to cross the bridge in broad daylight in open field. And he's fully aware that the last time he tried it, he lost one of his men. <laughs> but he's ready to do it again. There are only six guys left. Why would you want to do this? I'm really wondering how these guys got so far with such shitty tactics. They seem to me like special forces. Can they find a low key place and just swim across the river? My theory is that Washington actually had 100 men on his command. And by the time he rescued these two pilots, only six were left. He, <laughs> he used them all as bait. <laughs> this guy should have been enlisted in the Soviet army. Okay, so they're crossing. Of course, the Japanese can't aim. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean if you make it to the other side? Bro, your job is to keep these pilots alive. Who wrote this trash? Okay, the, the huge trope about Japanese hiding in trees. The rest of my boys are stuck behind a locked door, and we're the key. The hell does that mean? <laughs> Wait, just shut up and do what he said. Oh my god, they're so mean. I was asking myself the same thing. What do you mean? They're locked up. You're the key of what? Can you explain? So this guy drags these two pilots into a mission and won't even explain them what's at stake, what's going on. But I actually find it interesting how they mentioned the 93rd Infantry Division, the 23rd, the Ridge. How does it hold up to actual events? The 23rd Division did in fact land on Bougainville to relieve the 3rd Marine Division. But this happened in November 1943. It's the Marines that landed on Cape Torokina and secured the beachhead. The 23rd Division only replaced the Marines in January 1944. So the story would make much more sense had they said 1944. I have no clue why 1943 specifically was so important. But what I find funny is that that one time that Vanguard accurately names a unit. So the 23rd Infantry Division, they had to mess it up again. The 23rd Division, specifically that one, was the only American division never called by its number, but by its name. Namely, the Americal Division, which stands for American New Caledonian Division. Oh my god, I can't believe they actually pulled the stereotype of the angry black mama. Other than that, I find it pretty interesting how that one guy mentions his brother that fights in Europe. Most likely in the 92nd African American Division, which fought in Italy. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's a movie called Saints and Soldiers that depicts these guys. So now they're just... Okay, the ridge is there. Finally. Kid, are you insane? Literally, it's a massive ridge, and they're just walking from the front door into it. Vanguard is so lame. Six guys on their own against a heavily fortified ridge. And we have to take this game seriously. The actual battle of the Numa Numa Trail involved thousands of men. Just look it up. The actual story would have been the perfect setup for a campaign. Hostile environment enemy bunkers, Benzai attacks, it's all there. And what happened to taking part in massive battles? I want to see the Battle of Guadalcanal, the beach landing on Iwo Jima, the Battle of Hacksaw Ridge. But no, nowadays, it's all about special ops, guys. Small teams, snipers, and it's always about sneaking up onto the enemy. They really want to make it mysterious and all, but in the end, it's just boring and underwhelming. Okay, now they have the Japanese Siegfried line. Doesn't even make sense to have concrete blocks in the jungle. Concrete blocks to stop what? What vehicles are they supposed to block? So yeah, once again, they recycled the German Siegfried line and just dropped it in the middle of the Pacific. Now, during the actual battle, the Marines did in fact have to combat through a Japanese roadblock. 
But at this point, I really think the game developers did it on purpose because there's zero research that has been done. The here roadblock, okay, let's put concrete. But a typical Japanese roadblock did not consist of all these barbed wire and concrete blocks. It was simply a fortified position with many camouflaged anti-tank weapons. So again, I don't understand. Why are they doing this in the middle of daylight? The Japanese can clearly see them. I really don't understand. And why are there so many dead bodies all over the, this barbed wire? Aren't they the first Americans to go through this place? Okay, so now he takes back the flamethrower. Okay, this is a proper use of a flamethrower. Okay, I'm pretty happy. This is exactly what it would have been used for, to destroy enemy bunkers, or rather the people inside it. The only thing is that in reality, the flamethrower would only have 7 seconds of continuous fire, and then it would have to be recharged, or rather refueled. Okay, and now we're back to this nonsense of using it like a gun, like a main primary weapon. I understand that in multiplayer, if you want to do this, it's perfectly fine. But in the campaign, I'd like to stick to as much as possible to actual events. I'm getting mad, but I just miss World at War. At least when you use a flamethrower, it was chilling to hear the enemies scream and twist in agony. In Vanguard, they just drop like flies and die immediately. Okay, they're inside this bunker, killing everyone. That's good. Properly portrayed bunker. <laughs> what? Oh my god, I'm dreaming. A German STG-44 with the Japanese. In 1943. <laughs> Historical accuracy straight out of the door. Like they don't even want to pretend anymore. Another STG, great. Oh my, I can't stand it. Too many of them. Okay, check out this gun. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is a Type 41 mountain cannon. The Japanese did use this obsolete weapon during World War II because of its mobility. You could easily dismount it and transport it without vehicles. So that's fine. However, it does not make any sense to use it there. It's clearly positioned next to an airfield. The best thing there would be an anti-aircraft cannon. I don't know, maybe to protect the airfield against enemy airplanes. Oh my god, and now you have Japanese tanks. <laughs> okay, honestly, I was gonna go on the rant on why there were even Japanese tanks on Bougainville. But I did my research and found this picture of an abandoned Type 89 medium tank on Bougainville. So in a way, we can say it's loosely based on historical facts. But it's important to note that the Japanese face severe gas shortages and a lack of spare parts. So most of these tanks were actually used in a static position as artillery. Okay, so the guy's sniping. Okay, I don't know how accurate that is, but seems like a normal Call of Duty at this point. Hold on, <laughs> is that an MG42? Okay, it's definitely an MG42. <laughs> oh my god. An MG42 with the Japanese. I can't even get mad anymore. All these random German weapons in the Pacific just completely ruined the immersion. So that's what they meant with an alternate World War II setting, right? But the Japanese used German weapons. Anyway, let's keep going. And they call it the turret. Just name it. MG42. Random artillery. Oh my god, this is gonna be a joke, right? <laughs> a 76 millimeter Sherbet in 1943. These only came in in late 1944, early 1945. And they were specifically built to take down heavily armored German tanks like the Tiger or the Panther. Not paper thin Japanese tanks. If they wanted to be somewhat more accurate, at least make the Shermans be flamethrowers. Although these also came in late in the war. So, what do they want to do again? Oh yeah, the aircraft. 
But hold on. What are they doing? Wait, I actually don't understand. Why do... Huh? Do they know that by flying a Japanese aircraft, they'll most likely get shot down by their own allies? Okay, this story definitely doesn't make sense. I don't understand what was the goal of this mission. Wait, what? It got this. How did it get destroyed? This is one of the best tanks of World War II. <laughs> what? Okay, no. Wait, <laughs> what? Wait, hold on. You're telling me that the paper thin Japanese tanks, these little baby tanks, destroyed the 76 millimeter Shermans. Let's be honest, if any of these Japanese tanks just fired at the Shermans, the rounds would just bounce off. And hold on, I saw something else. Okay, this is bad. <laughs> this is the sh Oh my god. Is it me or the Sherman tried to fire at an aircraft? Vanguard not only shits on history, but it also defies every rule of physics there is. I had very low expectations before doing this reaction, but we've reached a new low. We're witnessing a complete rewriting of history and actual events. And that worries me a lot. But at least it gives me a lot of content to react to. That's all I have for you. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about this mission. And if you want to help me create more content, consider joining my Patreon. Link in the description.